So let's see. Looking around sort of the other picks from both teams, we do have that changeup. It is finally a game that there is no Earthshaker. Doesn't end up in the draw for either side. Crit this time is going to be bringing something a little bit different on the Enigma. Oh, but well, hang on. Top lane, Arteezy. Nice. Blocking him off a bit. Arteezy will still be able to get over the tree line with the dagger. Will get himself away from that early movement from NIP to try for that first blood. And he's going to have to go all the way back to base and TP back out, though. Heavy punish, and I think that Tsunami was right. Soxa Rubik is huge to this game, but I think it's actually about the support duos. More emphasis on NIP playing aggressively, especially the 3-3 Night Stalker. They need these five to 10 minute phases of the game going so well for them, because I do feel like EG's team fight at some point will be enough to take this game. It's just, it's just so easy to execute, right? You pop haunt and you run at the enemy. Supports, especially squishy ones like the ones NIP have, there's just no hope for them. Mid matchup too is key. This is not Sniper versus Razor, this is Lesh versus Razor. And this is, if any hero is Sumail's other than Storm, I'd say the Lesh track would be it. Now we'll see how well Sumail can do in this 1v1. Had a pretty good start in the, the Sniper in the first game. Uh, after sort of the first few minutes where Razor started to get a little edge. But obviously not enough to close up the game. NIP taking that game too. As EG... Approaching the game a little differently, RTZ on the Spectre. Definitely a hero that you can expect to see get very involved. Quite the opposite of how the Lycan was played last game. Yeah, for sure. The big test is going to be how the laning fate goes, though. Enchantress is one of those old school lineups where you would always play with the Night Stalker. I remember Newbie doing this all the time, like the KP Slaughter, KP Night Stalker. It's very aggressive and it secures the lane while this core is weak and then you hit nighttime and you start just crushing no matter who's up against you. I feel like it's a testament to like the drafting styles of both sides where EG, they just picked a bunch of comfort heroes. It's a very safe, stable lineup. You can see the way they want to execute when their power spikes will come online. Nip, a bit flashier and not really expected. I don't think anyone would have predicted an Ench and a Wraith King in this series, especially not in the critical game three, but that's EG, safe and stable, win with what we're good at, NIP, get a new flavor, try and get that strat strategical edge. And we can see already PPD, yep. just trying to, to hunt down Crit, make sure the Crit doesn't get the chance to jungle as he is, but Crit, yep. can go with the movement, able to alternate between the two sides of that mid lane and and stay where, where PPD isn't. So Crit yep. will be able to continue jungling uncontested. Yep, PPD, one of the best anti-junglers in Dota. One of the only few people who still does it. He warded the hard camp bottom jungle, warded for vision on the hill in top jungle. So Crit is now gonna be forced to work with just one camp. Still just level one, we'll hit two off that creep, but you're fine with this if you are the side of NIP. The stun will still land on S4. Ooh, Centaur just out of range. Now, even a TP up top as well from Crit. I mean, either way, you know, as you say, with the counts being taken away from him, he has to move over to this area of the map, but this is closer to PPD, and PPD will continue to prowl around, make sure the crit doesn't get that space. Yeah, so far, so good for RTZ down bottom, though. 14 and 8. This is the critical hero if you are EG, because he is the answer to these backline supports of NIP. Really good against the Night Stalker as well. You equalize that vision disadvantage at nighttime because by popping Haunt, all of a sudden, all blinks canceled and you have total vision of everyone on the NIP side of the field. Smell so gonna have his bottle up in a moment. This four minute rune is gonna be huge. The invis still bottom, but I wanna see NIP, specifically PPD, get active top rune. You don't wanna let Sumail snowball a lane, especially as a hero like Leshrac. Yeah, both teams with that vision around that rune spot. So definitely going to be a place where you'll see four minutes in and make sure that one another's mid doesn't get the free reign of the rune control. Let's see. Slow game thus far. Very tough to battle into EG's safe lane, or, or off lane rather. Looks like a safe lane because it's Bane Spectre. Not much kill potential unless you look to rotate more heroes. Smell actually grabs the invis rune and now we'll run towards top. Fada gets the bottle, so both mids actually able to fully regen up and get a rune res for each respective side. Up top, S4 being pressured a lot harder than I would have expected. Only seven and zero against a 20 and eight Wraith King. But again, that's just good job by PBD. Had a sentry down in the laning phase early, was sentried out by S4, however. 
we can still stay there. But it, it's just very scary when Ench is off map and you never know whether Wraith King is ready to just pop skeletons with the sentry down. So he's instead going to go just farm easy camp real fast. And fly. He's got the nightmare set up on mid. CTP's come in to help out Fada. In fact, it's going to be a Wraith King ace coming in to help out Fada. Got the static thing on to fly though. Chase him down with the Wraith Fire Blast and the skeletons. They'll get that kill. First blood for ace. Wow. It's not a rotation you see very often. The Wraithing actually, the one teleport mid. No one else really can though, that's the key. If 3-3 three, three does, he's a non-factor. And Soxa, he wants to continue playing aggressive, get these runes, and it looks like he'll do just that. Now he'll be able to grab that one, take it away. Oh, it's easy. Yep. Let's get the dagger on, but doesn't want to chase through. And 33 will be able to keep a hold of the one on their half of the map as well. They did a great job of rune control in the first, or second game, did an IP. Big part of their victory. Even though there wasn't much action happening on the map, they always seem to be in the right place, right time to get the majority of those rune spawns. Nighttime has come upon us as well. 3-3, three, three, suddenly a force in this bottom lane instead of a non-factor. He will happily start CSing with ease. 50 attack speed, just thanks to the darkness. Still a bit tricky to get on top of Arteezy there. For sure. He's just playing so defensive by the tower. Less track level six. Now the Bane sleep is going to be enough for a kill. Fly going straight in. You got to be careful of your fight as well. I think Sumail might just go hard here. He's committing. He's got a fairy fire. He's playing the numbers and with a fairy fire, it's nope. not enough though. Fada kills off Sumail. He'll chase down towards Fly as well. He's a little low on the HP. Has still got the eye of the storm going. In fact, with the plasma field, he may just grab nice. this and he does. Sets up for Saxa to nuke down Fly with the fade bomb. Yep. They and get both kills. Hey, and I questioned his skill build in the first game. He went for the same one, this max QW with an early point in alt and proving that he is the Razor expert after all. Because while the passive knight is nice for farming, when you're fighting against an aggressive Lesh, those extra points in Lincoln Q are actually what gave him the damage advantage to find Sumail before he would actually be counter killed on. A stun comes out from S4 up top. But Ace has got, he's got the back of a Saxa. They'll just yep. turn straight yep. toward him with the Rape Fire Blast yep. and with the dust prepared, NIP. They get that kill. Ace's farm continues to grow. Hey, Being looking... involved in these kills as well. It's a beautiful start for the Wraith King. Oh, yeah. If you're looking for a way NIP wins this game, this is how the start of it looks most of the time. I love the decision by Ace. Actually, Saxa purchasing dust for his Wraith King to ensure, because you want that Radiance timing ASAP, but you need dust, because otherwise S4 can just pop Sandstorm and AFK. This allows you to play very aggressive, much like Sumail is down bottom, finding a kill on PPD. Now getting some sort of kill involvement for RTZ in turn. It's both RTZ and Ace very close with one another in CS. Yeah. But the kills as well, the net worth also so close at the moment in this laning stage. Both carries off to a strong beginning. Yeah, but think about it. Yeah, PPD's net worth isn't high, but it's the game impact we've got to look at. Crit is only level four. He's still about 400 gold away from his HOD. The pace that EG plays with to kill towers is all revolving around this Enigma, and his timing has been delayed by three, four minutes. Already been forced to use both shrines as well. So Peter's, well, as always it seems he does, sacrificing his own game for the greater good. Mid lane. Focus once again, fly. See if you can get a look in, but as you say, PPD's is positioning, always stopping EG from getting away with these movements, and now they can look to try and chase down Fly. Saxa, he's closing in the plasma field, into the Fade Bolt, as Fly will get right click down, the Eye of the Storm helping Fada claim the kill. Another bit of action favoring this mid lane Razor, Fada. I like what NIP is doing here. You can't allow EG to constantly roam mid with the Bane. It's, it's Bane Lash, it's such an easy kill setup. And it's the hero that EG wants to snowball. And once again, it's Peter. He's standing there as a living ward, denying Fly the ability to play middle. It's very important. Bottom, you have Nighttime, Night Stalker against the Spectre. And even though he was outmatched, look at the CS now down bottom. All of a sudden, 3-3 has more denies and CS. And you're going to find another kill, it looks like, up top on I S4. Mean, every single time, more than prepared with the dust and making it look so easy at killing S4 off. He's always on his own. They'll bottom see lane. AG try and return to go for NIP's off lane. And they've got the setup with the Nightmare into the stun. And they will get 33. So both side lanes taking a fall. Part of TP's in, but can't do anything in time. We'll be able to maybe hold the pressure off his tower as, of course, NIP up top. They are starting to take the tier one themselves. Look, Ace is just rushing Radiance. Treads, Quelling, Shield. 
straight in for the big item. And, and it's like Grant said, this, this is how NFP want to win the game. Get that timing up, play around the Radiance, and just start sweeping the map. I mean, he's, he is well into the Relic Gold. If, if they get this tier one top and then are able to move around, take the tier one mid and bottom, Relic is going to be online yep. so quickly for Ace this game. But so is Crit. He's got the Wolf Creep, got the HOD. They're looking to push. They've got the Haunt used as well. They want to try and find Fada. They've got him. Raze is gone. Can EG get anything else out of this? They'll look towards the tier one mid. And with the fourth, in fact, the full five of them are here, they can push onwards. Fortification will slow them down a little bit, but they'll be sure to stick around and open up the map by removing the mid tower from NIP. Yep. They want to make sure it doesn't get denied, though. Got to be careful. PPD. Oh, oh. close, but oh. not quite. EG will still get the final touch as they take that tier one tower down. Look at the last hit up top, though. Yeah, it was Ace. So he's doing a great job ensuring that he is going to accelerate as fast as possible. And hey, gold, if they can get some of these bounties, too. They got three again. This is so, so quick and so scary for EG if Ace gets this Relic timing. It's all about the team fights, though. That's what EG is looking for. You can see with Haunt active, they are strong and they will look to find a fight. It changes, though, once Ace has the Radiance, maybe a Blink Dagger, and he can look to just charge forwards. Yeah. No one on EG is going to be able to contest him with his ult active once that item is online. They've got to do something about this Wraith King. He is going to be such a huge problem for EG come the mid-game if Ace continues to hit these timings that he's working towards. Radiant's bottom tower. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to have a relic at like it's 12 so minutes. Yeah. As EG, now move forward for another tier one. Keeping the push in down bottom. Aren't yep. easy. Shows himself in mid. He is on his own. Saxa can't Radiant quite close the gap for the telekinesis. You can Arts. see... You can see how important it was, though, for Peter to slow down crit. Because, yeah, these towers are melting, but at least they stayed alive for that extra two or three minutes. You want to buy time for that second night phase at 15 minutes to come up. If you could, you'd love to get mid, but great job by Arteezy pulling the creep wave away. They're going to have to aggro uh, for it. Down bottom. They've, they've got a fight going in. IP. They've taken down crit. Ace has turned up oh, wow. as well. He's looking towards Samael. This is a big cold boost if they get it, and they do. They get both the kills. Fada, he's starting to chase down for more. They've got their eyes on Fly. PPD also helping with the chase towards him. A big static link means that Fly is going to get slapped down with a couple of whips from Fada's Razor. As there's three dead on EG, the fact that Ace gets involved as well, that's got to be pretty much the Relic Gold it on is. Ace. It is. He's got the Relic Gold pre-12 minutes. Oh, but S4, looking for a double stun. Silence causing some issues. He'll settle for PPD. They'll get the Enchantress, but nothing else. Yeah, he'll take that all day if you're PPD. You're 1,400 net worth. You do not care if you're the one who goes down. It's just buying more space for Ace. Game. You can see Soxa did steal the Split Earth as well. That's one of the downsides of picking Lesh into Rubik. I love the synergy with EG's draft, but Soxa now has a zero cast point time on a two second stun that deals 240 damage. Like you're actually setting up kills all by yourself. You plus anything, once you have this spell, is a kill on anyone. Looks like Artur will be going for the Radiance build as well. Might switch it up and go for like the Manta Diffusal, but so far 1300 gold, definitely behind Ace is oh, progression. Oh, sure. I mean, Ace is... I mean, as, as I said at the end of game two, he's been having such a good series. And this game three, being able to move around the map and find the, the avenues to farm in, no deaths. He has not been caught out a position at all. And he is on the road to an incredibly fast radiance in this all-important game three. Yep. Winning side does move on to the top three of this MDL Paris Major. Here in Disneyland, a ton of fans still in the arena. I know you've been here a while, folks. I like what NIP is doing as well. Like, if you look, both Soxa and uh, Fada's Razor are going for Atos because they know they're going to have enough front line. All three of their cores are in tanky, and you know you'll have a Wraith King that's just going to be going full Divi forwards. So ensure you have that catch. Find those kills on EG. Don't let them buy enough time into the late game where their superior team fight will change the status quo. Look at that. That was, that was, EG had a couple of heroes mid trying to deny, but Ace's yeah. skeletons, they get the last hit on the tower. It's more money for the Wraith King. The Radiance is it's pretty much done. 14 minutes. Yeah. It's on the way. As soon as the Courier's back in base, they'll have it up. Pre-15. And talk about a power spike. You're going to have a bounty rune fight. 
nighttime for five minutes and radiance. And if Ace wants to get active, he can. But what I expect him to do is just to take a more aggressive route on his farming pattern and force EG to either abandon the sides of the map or fight into him. And I like this oh. every single time. Saxa they got the stun. has been prepared with the dust. No oh. messing around. They know how to play. They know how to deal with that Sand King. Oh. NIP, always prepared. Yep, look, Sox is going to TP back to base. Was out of mana. Now he's got Burrow Strike for a full three minutes. And there's the timing, no surprise. Incredibly faster than the average on Ace. Oh my goodness. As he'll just run down, fly with the help of 33. Yeah. This is where, you know, EG, they'll see that. They'll spot it out. Radiance online on this Wraith King. Not just that. Look, Bounty Runes. It's perfect. Like, NIP could not have hoped for a better start to this game. Now it's just about capitalizing on their lead. And they will have the vision control. That's the downside of EG's lineup. Sure, I like their team fight, their lanes, and their kill potential is much easier to execute. You just stun in. But now that you've hit this mid game and you're behind, there's going to be a Night Stalker just cutting across the map at all times. You'll have an Atos up in a moment on the Razor. There it is. Sox is 200 gold from completing his own. How do you stay alive when you, any moment someone's under vision, they're immediately going to be CC'd? Smell's gonna have a Yules, but that's not gonna help his survivability. They'll just wait underneath. Yeah, this game has been entirely slowed down somehow. With how fast everyone else is playing, they have to somehow utilize the team fight, and it's hard against this Wraith King with the Radiance and the Reincarnate. The, certainly the Wombo combo of EG just won't have that sort of impact. There'll be the easy potential for NIP to turn around and fight back alongside Ace's second life in the midst of the fight. And look, Ace is doing exactly what I expected, just aggro farming. He's going to be playing enemy jungle as much as possible. S4 pushing out bottom. He's got treads in a bottle, but still so far away from a blink dagger. No real catch potential on the EG side. Atos going to be coming out on Sox as soon as the Curry's back in base. And Ace just continuing farm aggressively. Deny the dire jungle. Throw this gold lead. How does crit... <laughs> maintain a presence here. They lose top tower almost without us thinking about it because there's just so much pressure on this EG side of the map. Next move, probably Roshan. They do have the medallion on the Night Stalker. Full skeleton charges as well on Ace. So maybe you get a tier two for free first. Who knows? Top, there's still so many skeletons. Look at the damage output coming out. It's going to force glyph. glyph. Yeah. Or at least some sort of response. The Eidolons are trying to take it down. At least skeletons hurt. The little bit of damage it adds up. That tower is starting to get beaten down. Space is there for... NIP to look towards the tier two in the middle. And the blink dagger's out on the Wraith King. Ace is just ready to jump and go. Yeah, and look what he's doing as well. He cut behind the tier two mid, just continuing to farm enemy jungle. Now he's going to, perfect, cut the bottom wave. This is huge. You don't want anyone to be forced into that bottom lane. So ensure you cut this. It's not as if Wraith King is actually a target. He's got two points in his ultimate. This is really well done by Ace here. Apply pressure to two lanes at all times so that you can continue to sweep the other side and try and keep EG in their own choke. 6k the gold lead already it's gone up by maybe 500 750 a minute since this radiance was picked up by ace and on top they're hunting they've found arts easy he has got and look at the rest of the heroes they're just waiting hoping he haunts yeah can he play his way out of this at all he's got another dagger but the rod's out saxa has the hold and that's arts easy dead and gone it's perfect I think they might look to Roche, but it's, it's got to be careful. The buyback haunt is always a threat. Arteezy doesn't want to use it, of course. He's at 3,200 gold, trying to close in on his own Radiance. But the question is, will it even matter when it comes online? Look how far Ace is ahead of this game. He's so far ahead, about a 4K lead on the cause of EG. They do get the lockdown As and I kill him off it. for once. See if they can go for him a second time. Backup's inbound. And he's able to get the blink out off the reincarnate. As Ace is out of there. The ping's now for Roshan, as you say, and people will see if they want to go for it. But nope. it is hard with EG having the full lineup. Yep. And no don't big take it too quickly. No big spells revealed, but it did uh, show off the S4 Blink Dagger. Crit trying to finish his mech. These are big items for EG to pick up. They're going to smoke. They want to fight now with Wraith King Ulti on cooldown, ensure that there's no way Roche is going to be taken. But NIP are aware of this. I think they changed this up. They were playing aggressively looking for a fight. Now. Play a bit passive. You'll win a fight on your own shrine and high ground, but you can't be as aggro in the enemy woods anymore. 
Back the smoke. Let's see, they can find the ruby. Jump in onto Saxa, but it's going to try and help out. Saxa will die. There's the hold from Arteezy. They'll look to try and go for more, but 33. He's already in on the front lines of the fight. They're on top of the less track. Yule's up into the air, though. Samael will be able to walk back up the high ground. In fact, he wants to get an ace. Jumps in, stuns out onto the Enigma. 33's killed off the bane. Burrow's trying to S4 in with the epicenter. They're on top of Fada. Fada surrounded by EG. They'll get the Razor. So they can get more out of this, but 33. He's still good to fight with the silence. Only S4 and RTZ left alive. Sameo having to buy back to come and help out as he TPs over towards the shrine. They'll chase down S4. S4 burrow strikes. He's still stuck in the trees. They won't look any further. They'll back off knowing that that buyback's there from the Lesh. And NIP able to, to get that fight going. A situation where a buyback is expended by EG will mean that NIP still hold that advantage. Yeah, there was a two for three, but the buyback is the big punish. EG were perfectly fine with that trade, but... Sumel hurting his own game significantly. They will finally get equal number of bounty runes here, grabbing two for the first time this game. That buyback hurts. Lesh is the key hero. His survivability factor is what will actually deal damage in these engagements for EG. Yeah, sure, you're going to have a Spectre Radiance soon, but there's already a pipe up on the Night Stalker. Yeah. A lot of this damage is being negated, and the cores are already so tanky on the side of NIP. Sumail needs to have the items, not just like, he needs to stay alive. The longer he's in a fight, the more DPS we're gonna get out of him, but with just 1200 HP, anytime he gets blink stunned, he's just dead. We saw EG make a move towards the pit last time. And that was at a point where NIP was smart enough to not even try and go for the roast. They waited outside, they knew that EG were gonna go for that move, and now it's, it's so much harder for EG to do it again. Yep. As it's NIP have the space, they cannot enter the pit, EG. And NIP will get this Aegis. I feel like we're going to need some miracle from Crit, but that's so difficult. You're playing against a Rubik. You're playing against the Night Stalker. You don't want to itemize for the big ultimate, but it feels like he's going to need to land one to get EG back into this. They're 7k down against the Aegis, and Nip, they learned from that first game. I do not expect them to sit on this lead. They've got the Aegis. They've got a second life on the Wraith King. It's time to get aggressive. You can see them circle. They're going to cut top, play this area of the map real fast, sweep to the right side, kill those two towers, force EG into base, and perhaps threaten high ground once this gold lead's grown to 10, 12,000. And particularly as well, when Fada has the BKB, he'll be ready to just charge up the high ground, even die past tier fours. Yep. The BKB, the big item, I believe. Just the recipe away on the Razor. Then all of a sudden, you'll have two cores that can play with Reckless Abandon, whereas EG, you've got a Bane, a Lesh, a Sanking, and Enigma. None of these heroes really want to be initiated upon. Even Arteezy on Spectre, sure, he wants to frontline, but it's not as if you have any hard save on EG. You can sleep him, but as soon as he wakes up, he'll still be stuck in a nightmare. Now, Radiance for Arteezy, finally done. Just 100 gold, and the recipe will be there. With that Haunt ready, maybe EG can try and find a fight globally and pick off someone of NIP whilst they're not prepared to go for a fight themselves. But of course, if 33's around with that pipe, it'll be very hard for EG to get the quick kills before NIP gets the kills themselves. With NIP having a pretty good mix of damage sources with Ace is hard hitting. Yeah, and he went for the Skeleton Damage Talent, level 15. Very underrated. I'm glad to see him pick that up. It is so much DPS on these Skellies. They last for 90 seconds, and if you're unable to clear them as EG, he will shred your base. Thus popped. Taxa. Try for a, a bit of a setup onto S4. The rest of the team on their way, but S4. Oh, bottom. We'll be out he gets grip, but he's so tanky. I don't know if you want to make this play. EG. There's a lot of TPs coming in from NIP. They're going to respond to this immediately. They'll go for the horn, trying to kill off 33, but Ace, he's already on top of Fly. The Rod of Atos holding down S4. Ace is just committing on the front lines. He's going to have that second life. He's good to fight again. Got a stun on Saxa. Let's see if they can go for this Saxa with the Burrow. Look at the skeleton to Samael. Samael's gone. They're trying desperately to find this kill on the Ray King a second time. They do. They will kill off Ace the two times. PPD looking for crit. Now with the dagger out, Arteezy can chase down PPD. Another stun onto Crit. Crit's now gone. The dust is there on S4. Arteezy's desperately chasing for PPD and will manage to oh take no, down the Oh no, he's in the They've lost the Razor as well. They've killed off the Aegis. That's a great fight for EG. You cannot hope for anything better. It doesn't, they, they only grow the lead, you know, 2K change, but you're happy with that because your Spectre lived and the Wraith King died. That is key. 
Even though he's this farmed on ace, 4K ahead of the game. You're closing the gap. All of his items are offensive. He does not have that survivability you'd expect. Five armor on the hero, Radiance, Maelstrom, Blink. None of these heroes give him any HP or survivability increase. You can see the AoE damage of EG. If Spectre or Lash are able to get him at the same target, I thought 3-3 had a way more chance at living throughout that engagement, but great job punishing during daytime. That's what EG needs to continue to look to do. Knight will hit in 30 seconds. They do not have Haunt, and Bounty Runes will once again be spawning. And play a bit more passive around the map, but really just making the best of a poor situation. I thought for sure Nip was going to be able to get down bottom and clear objectives, but EG had other ideas. Now looking to gather around these top bounties. And then IP, with that smoke, wanting to fight whilst the Hornet is down. Yep. They will just move straight towards securing the bottom two bounty runes, and it does mean that they'll avoid going head-to-head -head with EG. EG themselves up here as five, preparing for a likewise move, but both teams will avoid one another. Ace playing cautiously, EG as well. They have no intention of running up that high ground, knowing that all heroes of NIP are missing. And I like, once again, just good play by NIP. They're moving around as a unit. They get a nice smoke off before nighttime. EG, you just can't play into that with no haunt available. Now they just plant Ace on the top tower with TPs ready. Sure, you could try and dive him, EG, but you still don't know where anyone on NIP is. Plus, it's nighttime. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Solar Crest finished on the Night Stalker. If they can find an opening to hit buildings, they will shred them. Radiance it's all about EG's team fight. Haunt is active. Everything ready to go. Now, EG's still waiting for someone to step out in this top lane with Fly. Crit hidden in the trees, but is it going to be the case? NIP revealing themselves down bottom. Dyer's bottom tower. Taking the tier 1 build for Ace after the Miona into the AC. Wanting to, to forgo the BKB this game for now on the Wraith King. Looks like they're going to go here, Tom. Blink up in a second. Ace actually jumping in for the Helm of the Dawn Creep, and he will get it. And now S4 will come in with the Bow Strike, Samel. Has the follow stun, they're still a little hesitant on how much they go in on him, but with the Midnight oh. Pulse, it's enough damage. They'll kill him the ones. They're going to back out immediately. They're going to go down bottom. Let's see if they can get that jump on the 33 instead. RTZ is going to be super kept. So, no! He still dies. Crip with the black hole will allow them to get 33, but it wasn't enough to save Artor in time. PPD getting the last impetus through to kill him. They lo do lose the Enchantress as well. Nearly uh, uh, very close to being perfect yeah. for EG, but just losing RTZ before they're able to make that, that return play. Yeah, living life on the edge is Artor. If he had just got lucky with one of those four impetus missing, he would have lived, but. They get the turnaround kills. Still okay for EG. Two for one, they got the Wraith King ulti before he had 18. So now they have this 80 second window where there is no second life. They'll have 50 seconds once Arteezy respawns to try and make a play without that free Aegis factor on the big hard carry of NIP. But still, as you can see, minute by minute that goes on, Nip are still out farming around the map. They're, they have a better uh, creep wave just pushing power on the squad, but more importantly, they have more ways of controlling vision around the map. It's a lot harder for EG to play independent, thus they got, as you can see, even just getting punished bottom by uh, the three and the five of NIP, and that's your hard carry Spectre, but the whole rest of your team had to hold hands top just in case Nip was looking for a fight up there. Very difficult for EG to play this game until they hit that critical mass where NIP can't team fight them any longer. Then this game changes and EG can look to be aggressive. Fada. After the BKB, what, what, what do you sort of hope to see Fada pick up on the Razor? More of what he did last game, just the Shivas, maybe yeah. an Ags. I like Shivas a lot. It's just all about the vision control for NIP. You don't want to ever walk into a choke point against the EG lineup. One of the more classic combos throughout history, numerous rosters, the Enigma Sand King. All it takes is one mistake, three heroes will implode. You can see how easy it is. They, they even killed the Wraith King without actually committing because they just have so much hard lockdown from long distance. Saxa. Oh, that's four. Trying to start things off. Wants the Sand King on the front of it all. They've got the chains to the stolen Burrish right comes into play and S4's gone. Now with 33 leading on towards Fly. Fly tries for the TP out, won't make it. As NIP hold on on the top lane, kill off two heroes and don't lose anything themselves. Yeah, that was the darkness pop. All of a sudden you have clear vision. Much easier to play the game for NIP. He's going BKB next on 3-3, as you said, already picked up on Fada. He will be going for the Shivas next. 
Just tank ability, vision control. Your Wraith King will deal plenty of DPS. They will be controlling the armor equilibrium as well. They should be able to get the AC up on Wraith King before anyone on EG even thinks about going for that himself. In fact, I don't know who can, really. It's a 10 armor swing. Greaves, however, on the Enigma. No one's picked that up yet on the side of NIP, but that's just a matter of which heroes can itemize for which items. You don't want to go something too far out of your comfort zone, even if your team needs that purchase. No Vlad's on either side, but you don't really need it on NIP. You've got the Lifesteal Aura on Wraith King. Nice lane ward mid as well. That's fresh. Maybe the smoke will catch them off guard though, EG. Leading the way up towards the high ground, smoke just put on fly in. Silly, there's S4 with a jump in onto PPD. PPD. We'll try and run it off for the heal, but Samael with his newly found blink will be able to jump in and offer the damage required to kill Peter off. This is huge. They're trying to just get these bounty runes away from NIP. It looks like once again they'll win just two. But you can see the difference, right? Last night, uh, last rune spawn, NIP got aggressive with the smoke because it was turning into night. So you want to be able to find an engagement around that power shift, e.g. you're going to smoke just before it turns today, or, yeah, today, yeah, which is today, so that you can actually take this fight with Night Stalk results still on cooldown. Roche is active. Night Darkness will be up in 15 seconds. Do EG make it. this play? They're certainly going to look to go for it. But NIP, they can contest this with that... Reincarnate available on the Wraith King, they could just walk in and start off the action. They do have to be a little bit careful with the black hole available, but even then, Saxa, yep. he can look for the steel play. Back towards mid, Fly already started to go on. There's going to be the BKB from Fada. Crit using the black oh, hole no. to control the Razor. Horn in from Artesian. Fada's gone. They kill the Razor off Fada, buying back. They want to try and fight now that they know that these big cooldowns have been used. They'll move in S4 with the Burrow Strike onto Ace. Ace being the focus. 33 cannot control Crit. Saxa will jump in. Stolen Burrow Strike. He's trying to find Crit, but the damage output for Samael is too high. Sax is dead. Another buyback being used by NIP. Crit still alive as he keeps himself away from 33. PPD is trying to find him back towards the river. Ace will finish off S4. As S4. May have to contemplate using the buyback himself. He's dead for 50 if they really want to try and keep the fight going out around the Roche. But it looks like as it is, NIP will back away. Both teams leaving the area. Look at bottom though, the skeleton army going to work on the tower. An easy tier two here for Ace. Yeah. And again, the gold disparity doesn't change. A bunch of buybacks there. Two used by NIP, just one used by EG. Certainly a win for the dire side, I'd say. They did use all their ultimates, however. NIP, once Next Darkness is up, you're gonna have what looks like a 50 to 60 second window before Enigma ult is back up. You will be playing into the haunt, however. And you can see, now that the Manta's complete on RTZ, it's, the momentum's starting to shift towards EG. We can see why their draft will be better in the late game, even though the Wraith King's 8,000 so net worth ahead. ahead. It, it, but it, as you say, it doesn't, it, it certainly feels like this yeah. Spectre. Arteezy can have a, a very comparable amount of impact in these fights to this incredibly farmed Ace Rave King. This is such a back and forth game. Now, let's see, anything new? Bots finished on Sumail. He's got an Arcane Rune bottled, a pipe on the Sand King, double bracer on Fly, just trying to increase survivability. It's the name of the game here. And it just comes down to Spectre has so much of an easier time finding targets. You just pop Haunt and you're good to go. Fada made the mistake of thinking his BKB would protect him, but with Soxa out of range, there was nothing left to interrupt the crit black hole. Now the... Well, they just killed Roche. Yeah, NRP's oh able to God. finish it. EG doesn't get back there in time. So NRP will end up getting the Aegis for Fada. Yeah, credit to PPB. PPD. He had the Wolf Creep. That's 30% more DPS, and that's the time that they needed to finish that Roche before EG was in position to contest. That was a speed that EG just wasn't ready for. Nope. His next item's up for some of the heroes. Crit working at that BKB, 2,500 gold on towards it. And we'll have a much easier time of just walking in, getting that black hole off with not too much that he has to worry about at all. Maybe still sacks against the steel. But even then at that, he should have a good shot locking down the cores without interruption. Oh, it's easy. Not easy. Walk forward on his own, Fada and Saxa starting to have a poke upon the man to start a retreat, but the BKB and the rod from Fada controlling him up. They're looking towards the Spectre, he's taking a lot of damage in return though, Fada, but they can stand their ground, keep oh on God. going. Arteezy's dead, now Samael, he's trying to jump in, there'll be a buyback haunt used from Arteezy, they're going to try and turn this around, EG, but they've lost Samael. They pop that first life on 
Fada and yeah, the Raven. Another engagement down bottom, though. But they're ready they found. To, yeah, they can go for him here. They're trying to kill off 33. He's tanky, and the rest of NRP is on their way over. They do finish off the kill. Yeah, 3 3 just getting a little over aggressive. He keeps trying to fly up high grounds, but that's the second time Fly has been ready to find him. The only way he goes down is if he catches that sleep into grip, and he did for the again, and he's nowhere near his team. They wanted to chase topside, then look bottom as 3 3 calls for help, but it's not in time. And sure, the gold lead keeps increasing for NIP, but it, you know, as the game gets later, that number means less and less. It's a lower proportion of the overall net worth lead. And, you can see Asajj and Yasha finished on Fada. Really expected the Shiva's guard. Going for more of the raw DPS build, however, that was instrumental in finally killing off Arteezy as we check out all the items picked up thus far. Cheese being swapped over to PPD, probably just holding it for the time being. Ace picks up the Black King bar. Very important. Dispersion does not deal BKB piercing DPS. So if you're going to kill this Arteezy Spectre and you're standing on top of him like this melee hero, like this Razor wants to do, you have to be BKB'd so that you don't end up actually killing yourself. And man, just keep in mind that level 25 talent on Spectre, if he gets to that 6% extra dispersion, it's 28% reduction, and the damage dealt to him before reduction is then an AoE around him. And there's no one even thinking about a Silver Edge right now on NIP. There is this timing now, though, where neither Horn or Buyback is available for RTZ. Oh, he just did it. That was that was the big fight with the so hard buyback. If, if they can go from here, oh, Fada does uh, does press the BKB there. So now they are actually sort of got a, a bit of an awkward minute where Fada will not yeah. have the BKB ready to do anything. And that's the big threat of Spectre is the hard buyback. And as you said, when he, when it's on cooldown, this is this is where NIP would love to get aggressive, but with no ages, very risky. It is night time for four minutes though, so no time like the present. I'm sure 3-3 three, three would really love to finish his Black King bar beforehand. Still 500 gold away. Fada going for a Satanic. You got the Black King bar on Ace. Not sure. His level, uh, the problem is none of the cores on NIP have level 25 talents, even close to the effectiveness of the Spectres. And our Tor is just that one level away. As Nip, they just continuously, they're trying to cut. They're trying to find EG. They have no interest in engaging in anything other than a full 5-on-5 five five, as Sumail uses his Blink Bots pickup to consistently shove the offlane and be ready to TP. Bottom tower is under attack. They have to be careful of Crit's Enigma though. Sax has got to be prepared for the steal. Because with that BKB though, Crit can just hold his ground. Look to commit with that huge area of lockdown. Both teams starting to go S4. He's going to rev up the Epi. Just get the jump in straight away on top of the Wraith King. Ace down to half health. he will put the Mion in, but he's falling low under the Midnight Pulse. He'll die the once. So they can kill him another time here. S4 trying to back off now. The BKB's popped by Ace. They'll find Fly. So the rest of EG back away. The bottom, tier three taken by Sumail. He blinks out immediately as well. He's opened the base. And IP, can they actually get anything out of this? They're looking towards RTZ, but RTZ's got a lot of backup here on the high ground by the Shrine. 33 is trying to head forward. He's in with the silence on top of the three of them, but he's falling low. This burn damage from the Radiance starting to stack up. Now Fada does get the link off. Horn used from RTZ to try and break away, but the static link continues. Fada could keep locked down under the target. Black Hole used to hold it's back. Stolen. Make sure that there isn't more. Crit will get the kill, but there's the stolen Black Hole. Saxa, he's got the control, but he hasn't got the damage. Has to blink away. As the black hole there from Crit keeping RTZ safe, allowing them to kill Fada. Oh S4 God. still trying to fight up with Bottom PPD. lane. He has been the melee racks. In. The Malefice, they're looking for PPD, but as you say, the damage being done by the creeps. The creeps, they're going to do it. The creeps, they've got it. The melee racks is gone. Unbelievable by EG. They're just, all of a sudden, that gold advantage has disappeared. And you can see it's just so much easier for them to play the late game. Sumail. He's not just creating threat bottom like Arteezy's liking in game two, but he's able to come and fight, do battle. Nice ult once again by Crit, just using it for the single target, but that's what yeah. you gotta do against Rubik. Absolutely, it got Farted taken down, yeah. it keeps Arteezy safe, and this is a point of the game where this Arteezy Spectre is yeah. just, it's so hard to kill. And it the, takes too long. The key is that, it, once again, Ace is dying at the start of the fight, before BKB, before he gets any real damage out. And then when his reincarnation is on cooldown, he's playing passively. They need him to be the frontliner. He's got to be finding the Bane, finding the Enigma, but instead, he's just sort of rotating around the outskirts of the fight, and he's not on top of Arteezy as Fada is, and then they just don't have the damage output. These Ichi cores are too tanky. Octarine finished on Sumail. Now, this Mr. is very is, dangerous. He's made such a recovery, sort of sitting at that, that midway point on farm, but now stepping up, finding that space to push in down bottom, being down a racks now, NIP. 
They've got to get their heads down and focus because they're leaving open windows for the split to, to be there, to, to be able to abuse them. And now get the game in a position where EG, they're the ones in control. It's the first time. It looks like EG might even be able to take back the gold lead. It's under a thousand for the first time since, what, four minutes in? And so much of that gold is on Ace. A lot of pressure on Ace to make here big things comes. happen. They're going to look to try and fight here. Crit, BKB's pop. They're looking to get on top of him, but there's the BKB now from Fada. They've already lost the Rubik, though. Rubik taken down straight away. No buyback available. Fada at 33 is trying to keep the fight going, but the damage output from EG looks to be too much. Oh, easy. He's still on full HP. Focus is Fada. Fada's dead. The bar strike on a 33. They'll all die here pretty much on NIP. Ace will be able to BKB TP out. But there's three dead. PPD cannot get out either. The Malefist are lightning for some ale. As NIP, four hit the deck. Only two of them with buybacks available, EG. Four heroes alive and pushing down the middle lane. They're ready to try and take more away from NIP. Try and force out the two buybacks that are available. They're just gonna go for throwing They're going it looks for like. EG, no. But with their smart, oh. safe, calculated play, they're now in a position where they can get close to potentially just ending this game, a game which for the majority of it has had NIP holding the advantage, but now it is entirely gone. Two sets of racks taken, the top creep wave pushing in. They'll look to focus on the Megas with the cooldowns of, of the death time is running low. NIP will be back up for another fight, but it feels like a little too late now as EG take a huge sweep and a huge lead as this game, according to Gaben, is potentially just over and done with. Oh, for sure. And Tumel's even got the Tome on the way out. He's going to hit level 25. And I just, again, point to the late game advantage of EG. It's not just the items. It's not just that they're also tanky, but their talents on these two cores are so much stronger than their counterparts on the NIP lineup. Like, sure, you can stun everybody as you die, Ace, but you're dead. And the Razor's only 23. It's just such a great timing from EG. And I question any team. You just can't let the game go this late when you have no break mechanic against the Spectre. Arteezy is unkillable and NIP are suffering for it. And when they had such good timings, one of the quickest Radiance timings we saw in Ace, but it didn't matter as now Ace walks up, leads the way into the high ground, S4 and some hail. They're bringing him down so quickly. The first life just burned through like that. PPD has to get out of it. Ace pops the BKB, but crit, black hole, no messing around. Gets the Wraith King out of the game. Buyback from Ace is gonna be used by EG. They're heading forward, far out PKB as well as 33. They're on top of Samael, Samael. He's getting caught out, Yule's up into the air. He's still alive for now. Can they finally finish in the impetus? They've got him, Samael's down. They'll now be able to fly. The silence, the void, the crit. They've got two. Double kill though for crit in response. There'll be a buyback available for Fada if he the wants alt. to get back in. Ace, he's in trouble. He needs help, but he needs it now. He's not gonna get it, Ace. Dead without buyback, PPD. Stunned up by the bar strike, PPD, he's gone as well. As with this in mind, two dead without buyback on NIP. GG is caught, it's all over and done. EG, take game three, take the series two to one. And what a game, burning the midnight oil.